Hey guys, Levelcap here, and this week in gaming, we're taking a look at Hell Let Loose's next update, new events for Battlefield 5, Anthem 2.0, and much more. Hell Let Loose got a massive update just a couple of weeks ago that overhauled the game's animation system, added its first proper urban map, and made important balance changes to several mechanics. It was a pretty jaw-dropping update that was quickly followed by a free-to-play weekend. Unfortunately, it wasn't perfect. Crash and performance issues plagued the update for many players. The devs quickly deployed a hotfix that eliminated some of the crashes and performance issues, but there's still a few problems that they're looking to solve. A new patch is being deployed on Monday to address FPS drops, general performance issues related to CPU and VRAM usage, and crashes. Patch notes for the update will be made available Monday morning before it goes live later that day. The developers are also changing their patch release procedure. Instead of lumping tons of major changes into a single massive update, they're going back to releasing new features and smaller patches more quickly. This should speed up how often the game gets new updates, however each update won't be quite as significant as they were before. Two improvements detailed in this week's dev blog are bullet penetration and a rework of the Hertgen map. They provided very little info about the bullet penetration system, but each weapon will have a unique penetration value. The goal is to use penetration as a balancing mechanic and not just a blanket function that applies universally to all guns. As for the Hertgen rework, it sounds a lot more extensive than other map overhauls. They're rebuilding the map literally from the ground up using terrain height data imported from an entirely new map. The new version will feature four distinct areas. The first is a dense European pine forest with rescaled trees and improved lighting for visibility. The forest will have a greater variety of fortifications like trenches and bunkers, as well as more barbed wire to fence off certain areas. The second area is a destroyed forest similar to what you might see in photos from World War I. The third area is a grassy mountain plain, an essential area for armored vehicle transportation. The final area is a river in the center of the map that divides the land with three crossing points. Each team will have to consider which crossings that they own and how it will affect their map control. The rework images look pretty impressive and are certainly in line with the quality of the other map overhauls like the one done for for Foy in Update 7. Both the bullet penetration system and the Hertgen map overhaul are likely a few weeks away from launch and the future blog posts will be dedicated to them as they develop. Battlefield 5 might be at the end of the road when it comes to new content, but that hasn't stopped DICE from implementing new weekly events with unique login rewards. This week's reward was the Crew Cut Cosmetic. Subsequent weeks will offer weapon charms. Each week also offers in-game currency. Details regarding Battlefield 5's community games overhaul are also starting to emerge. A community manager of the game's official subreddit revealed proper mutators and customization options will be included included when the overhaul launches later this year. Things like hardcore mode will be possible with the new tools. And that will likely be the last time DICE implement any sort of significant changes to Battlefield 5. EA's failed Destiny clone Anthem might be getting a second life. The game's developer Bioware have announced a loot system overhaul coming to the game. The big improvements include a proper loot table, better balance for the random traits on weapons, and reduced grinding for upgrades. Hopefully this overhaul is just a small part of a much more significant rework to the game. Anthem 2.0, as it's been referred to, is essentially a complete overhaul of the game from the ground up. At launch, Anthem failed to capture an audience and was quickly abandoned by the majority of players. Bioware initially planned to add DLC content that would expand the game, but paused that in favor of the overhaul. It's unclear when Anthem 2.0 will launch, but these loot system improvements sound like a positive change. The bigger question is if Anthem 2.0 will be enough to rebuild the game's player base. Based on the intense criticism of the game when it launched, it sounds like the game's going to need more than a few little changes to bring players back. I'm sure Bioware is going to have to do some pretty big stuff to peak players' interest. 
The PlayStation 4 version of PlanetSci 2 just got a major update. Called Escalation, this update revamps character customization systems, adds new craftable assets like a fleet carrier and a citadel shield, a new tournament system, and much more. It originally launched on PC back in March. The patch notes for the PlayStation 4 version of the update span several pages. It's an absolute monster of an update that touches pretty much every aspect of the game. Popular Rainbow Six Siege YouTuber and esports personality Bikini Body was recently banned from the game by Ubisoft. He was suspected of cheating and issued a permanent ban. However, Bikini Body's account was compromised by a hacker that has attacked multiple Siege players with large followings on Twitch, YouTube, and social media. According to Body, the hacker manipulated Ubisoft into giving him access to his account with fake account details. They also disabled the account's two-factor authentication at the hacker's request. These tactics are referred to as social engineering and are a widespread issue. Issue. They take basically no technical knowledge and very little information about the victim to effectively break into online accounts. Some companies have taken a proactive approach to the issue with advanced training for their support staff, but apparently Ubisoft outsourced some of their siege support to a third party that lacks the training to spot social engineering. Body was unbanned shortly after posting a video to his channel detailing what the hacker did. And while that's great for Body, it has frightening implications for the broader siege community. How many players have been or will be hacked in this very same way? Everybody's wondering what what, if anything, Ubisoft is doing to fix the issue. Ubisoft hasn't released a statement regarding the incident. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Season 5 kicks off on August 5th. The date was announced in a teaser trailer for the upcoming season. It'll add two new weapons at launch and a new faction complete with unique operators. Beyond that, we don't know much about Infinity Ward's plans for the season. Big map changes have been teased for weeks leading up to the teaser launch, but there's still no official word on what they might be. Star Citizen single player campaign Squadron 42 got a roadmap for a roadmap that they're planning on revealing in the coming weeks. A Reddit post on the game's official subreddit hit the top of the feed this week, pointing out the developer's total lack of communication regarding progress on the campaign. In response, the devs released a blog post acknowledging the lack of communication and their plans to roll out more detailed info and videos while they work on updating a proper roadmap. Roadmap. A retailer's listing for Halo Infinite caught the internet by surprise, saying the upcoming game's multiplayer would be free to play. It also said certain multiplayer modes would run at 120 FPS. And while the listing was initially taken as an error, industry insiders quickly confirmed the information as fact. Later in the day, the official Halo Twitter account announced the rumors were true. More details will be released before launch. Escape from Tarkov's latest update improved enemy AI and expanded the game's customs map, among other things. The new AI applies to scavs and the NPC characters roaming the maps. They can now react more quickly to players, attacking groups, and generally just play like they have a functioning brain. Before the update, the scavs were deadly but also kind of moronic enemies. The U.S. House of Representatives voted down a bill that was designed to prevent the U.S. military from using video games and esports for recruiting purposes. The implementation of this bill was inspired by some deceptive practices that the U.S. Army was using on Twitch that actually violated Twitch's policies, and in response, the Army announced plans to temporarily halt its Twitch marketing. I would imagine that Twitch-based recruiting is going to continue in the future, but probably with slightly less aggressive or deceptive tactics. In our final story this week, Metal Gear Solid 5 players have achieved the unimaginable. The PlayStation 3 player base collectively ended the game's Cold War by destroying all of the game's nuclear weapons. Metal Gear Solid 5 has a multiplayer mode that lets all players create, use, or destroy nuclear weapons. Getting every single player to disarm or destroy their nukes was thought to be an impossible challenge because, well, it sounds like an impossible challenge. But they managed to pull it off and unlock a special cutscene as a reward for the monumental 
monumental accomplishment. Kind of a cool easter egg and even more impressive that the player base was able to unlock it. And that wraps it up for this week in gaming. Let me know what story stood out to you. I'll be back on Monday with more daily news and gaming content. As always guys, thanks for watching. This is Level Cap, signing off.